2023 regular and public meeting minutes. I'll move. Second. Moved by Mr. Whitcomb, second by Ms. Motley. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Whitcomb? Aye. Ms. Motley? Motion to approve the June 13th, 2023 Committee of the Whole and Closed Meeting Minutes. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Gleason, second by Ms. Motley. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Ms. Motley? Aye. Ms. Bush? Aye. Ms. Lott? Aye. Ms. Stern? Aye. Mr. Whitcomb? Aye. Mrs. Russell? Aye. At this time, a public hearing will be held to receive comments regarding the district's intent to sell bonds to increase the working cash fund. May I get a motion to open the floor for the hearing? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Whitcomb, second by Ms. Motley. Roll call, please. Mr. Whitcomb? Aye. Mrs. Motley? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Ms. Bush? Aye. Ms. Lott? Aye. Ms. Stern? Aye. Mrs. Russell? Aye. The floor is now open. Are there any board member comments? You said board members? Board members. All right, are there any written or oral comments from the public about the bond sale? Can I get a motion to adjourn the public hearing? So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Motley, second by Ms. Gleason. Can I get a roll call, please? Mrs. Motley? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Ms. Bush? Aye. Ms. Lott? Aye. Ms. Stern? Aye. Mr. Whitcomb? Aye. Mrs. Russell? Aye. The floor is now closed and the public hearing is adjourned. Moving on to our superintendent report, Dr. Shapiro. Thank you, Mrs. Kressler. A few items for tonight. Uh, one, uh, just having to report, Dr. Rowan has just recently gotten the uh, statistics uh, on our concept recovery summer program. We've had over 200 fish for students uh, complete this over the last few weeks. Again, we're looking at all these try to cover, try to get those concepts in and uh, have the report that is just coming out as uh, high summer school is still going on as well. Just a little preview for next month. Uh, Yasmin is on vacation, so she is preparing a board presentation for our committee on the new website and the app that we just took an in-depth tour and looking at that, how those two are connecting uh, with the community and also preview our community needs that are already going out to all of our uh, community with uh, the U.S. Mail. In addition, uh, Mrs. Morrison uh, has suggested and I agree that we will postpone that discussion on the Hunter the Post Project to next week uh, during the committee if time can be had for us to do any other further research and have a, a more robust conversation prior to taking action during the next week of action. And then uh, we will also be hearing from uh, Ms. Taylor. She will start scheduling work, individual board work presentations immediately beginning uh, the end of July. So I just need to get the time in your calendars, but we can start to get through what we have planned for the summer. Yeah. So that'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Nothing for me? All right, thank you very much. Moving on to item 4.2, our principal report. everyone. I got some numbers for everyone today. Some summer number fun out of that. 14.91 <laughs> uh, to 14.26. Uh, those are the numbers that our senior Johnny Rush ran in the 110 meter hurdles over Memorial Day weekend to win the individual state championship, ISSA 2A individual state championship. Um, he is the first individual state champ at Hillcrest since 2016 and only the fourth individual state champion in the history of the school. So uh, congratulations to Johnny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're a track fan, I, there's not a lot of us out there, but if you're a track fan, uh, to get put in lane one and win is a huge, huge accomplishment in and of itself because you're out on the edge you're not really able to see what everyone else is doing, and he just ran a, an incredible race. A couple other numbers for everyone. Um, we're, we're starting to compile uh, some of our statistics and our data. Um, we're getting pretty close to having all of our numbers in. And uh, from the 2022-23 school year, our freshman academy uh, right now is on pace to surpass last year's all-time high for freshmen on track. Uh, if our numbers cash out the way that we believe they will, we should finish with an 88% freshman on track rate. Um, like I said, the last year we were at 85, and previously
previous years, as far back as I can go, looking at data, it's typically the highest it was was like in the mid 70s percent back in like 2014. So really good strides with getting our freshmen on track to graduate on time. Uh, our seniors, we attained a 99.92 percent pass rate this past semester. Wow. So of all of our seniors, one student failed one class, and that was it. The rest of them all all passed. So um, that number we were at 99% but uh, Colin Milton and John Caney made sure that I add the 0 0.92 because that, <laughs> that makes us a little bit higher than what we were before and then finally uh, overall as a school we attained a 96% overall pass rate for students second semester uh, so match that up with semester one 94% pass rate um, we're looking hopefully there's a lot of things that go into it but we should be very near to an 80% graduation rate this year from our seniors. So things are still trending upwards. We hope to continue that. Um, and I hope you enjoyed all those numbers. Thanks. Yeah, congratulations. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening from the Braves. I did not bring you very many numbers or statistics <laughs> like Ron did tonight. Uh, we kicked off our summer, uh, Tom O'Shea, our new athletic director, hosted a summer visioning meeting for our head coaches of all of our programs, which was pretty exciting. That group came together, um, spent a full day just working on visioning and branding and goal setting. And they've got some really exciting plans for some leadership programming for our student athletes for next year. So I'm excited to see what comes, the work that comes from that group as we move into next school year. All of our athletic summer camps are up and running, so it's nice to have some life in the building after everyone ends, you know, the school year ends and we're still working. So kids coming through, we've had cross country camps that have been really successful. Um, our basketball camps, everything is kind of up in full swing. So that's really exciting. Last but not least, we're still undergoing some construction at Bremen. We are very excited. Our welding lab is underway. So it's nice to pop in there and check in on the progress to see how that's coming along. So we're excited that we will have the brand new welding lab up and running for this school year, as well as a new space, um, a new IT space for where those classes have been relocated as well. So, yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, two brief things for you. Um, our boys baseball were the regional champs this year. Uh, they ended up beating Evergreen Park to move on and then uh, were eliminated from there, but they were regional champs. And also thank you to Bremen High School for um, hosting our, our offices this summer where we have our large construction project uh, going on. I got a chance to walk through with uh, Kevin today. Uh, it's, it's on track and um, you know, on time ago. So we're looking forward to eventually moving back uh, in, but Bremen has been very gracious to our office staff uh, and very helpful to us as well. The Oak Forest camps are able to run over there uh, because the field house construction allows for that. Uh, so um, that's good, and um, thanks everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. <coughs> All right, everybody, welcome to Tinley Park High School. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to come a little closer. Um, I'm going to start out a little bit on a somber note, but then I promise to pick it up from there. So I know that you guys are aware that over the weekend, um, unfortunately, we lost some of our Titan students. Um, Matthew Berry, who is slated to be our junior next year, um, passed away in his sleep. Um, lots of questions, lots of hurt going around. Um, hats off to our counselors and our social workers, even some from Oak Forest. Thank you, Oak Forest. Um, came today to meet with some of our students. Um, actually met with the family today and um, one of their other students as well. So if you don't mind, if we could just take a brief moment of silence and honor our Okay, that's the part I was dreading. This is the part I'm okay with. Um, so uh, for my principal's report tonight, I have two outstanding friends of the Titans that are here with us tonight um, that I wanna make sure all of you know who they are and to say thank you for their continued contributions to our Titan family. So the first one is Mr. Neil Hummitch. Come on up, Neil. Now, um, Neil is not always a man of many words, I'm going to tell you that right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I first met Neil actually when he was the owner of Salinas, and I'm sure many of you have probably seen plenty of food from Salinas over, over the years, um, until he decided to take on a new venture, and that's the Sit Wine Bar on Oak Park Avenue, which 
which is quite lovely and fantastic. Um, and he and his family that you will always see there working and, and helping um, to make it a success that it is. Um, I originally met Neil through my partnership with the Chamber of Commerce and I couldn't be luckier to have established um, not only a, a business relationship, but a bride like to say kind of um, We had the, the pleasure of um, educating three of his five children, um, Emily, Rebecca, and then Sophie just graduated this year. Um, Abby and Gavin are seated right over here in the back. I said, boy, the three that went through Sydney Park High School are not here tonight. <laughs> uh, but the two to be titans are, are here in the audience uh, along with his wife. Um, not only that, are they outstanding kids, but this is the guy that when you're in need of something, he says, what do you need? What can I do? Um, from assisting whether it's, I know they've had pasta parties at their houses for different programs. I know that we've had different functions at um, his establishment for different things here at the high school. Um, he has participated for three years in our Taste of Tinley event where he's brought food from his um, establishment to let our community try. He's just one of those guys that you know is always a phone call or a text away. And it's what can I do? <laughs> 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 um, and again, you know, I, I do know that people know that I um, do have a partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, and here's just another wonderful example of how that partnership brings benefit to Sydney Park High School. So if you haven't been to Skip, I, I suggest you stop by. It is, it is a great place. I'm sure you'll see him there. Um, and with that, hang tight. I think it's better than an Oscar, to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I will tell you that um, only 15 of these have been made. These are 12, 13, 14 of 15. These were actually made by a student in 1999, Joey Pollitt and we actually created a mold from it so that we can have these made and we only give them to very special people. Um, so Neil, on behalf of Tinley Park High School, we'd like to say thank you. Wife up now. <laughs> <laughs> you, wait, you can come on up to me. Do you want to go? <laughs> He's thank funny you. too. <laughs> but really, just great family, great business, great connection for Tinley Park High School and um, couldn't be happier to have her I haven't really talked to in a long time, but he's always out there. And when I meet, when I say that, you'll you may recognize um, Tony Baranek. Come on up, Tony. Tony has been a longtime sports writer um, for the well, Daily Southtown. It's changed a few names over the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take bother you guys to hear a story. Um, well, Tony was actually writing when I was playing basketball. So, um, <laughs> which, which he, just, he just actually floored me because, you know, I thought he was, you know, right out of high school or right out of college. And uh, he told me he graduated from Bremen High School and was actually writing for the South Town in what year? Star. Uh, the Star. The Star. Uh, I worked for the Bremen Echo. There you go. <laughs> in 1974. In 1974. So, um, I remember talking to him as a player, um, then obviously came back as a coach, and because I had already had a familiar face from the days that I played, um, obviously struck up a great relationship with Tony over time um, in the coaching world. And one of my favorite stories about Tony is we were at the Hillcrest Holiday Classic. We were. And um, <laughs> he says, hey, Trees, um, how's your team doing? You know, how are you doing? And I said, we're undefeated. And he goes, really? I said, yeah, we're undefeated. He goes, you don't have, you have any losses? And I go, no, I didn't say that. I said, we're undefeated. <laughs> and he didn't know what I was talking about. And that was one of those years where I had just an amazing group of hardworking girls, great kids that you would all want to call your own. Um, unfortunately, they just weren't necessarily the greatest basketball players. 
Um, but you know what I said to Tony, they, they come to practice every day, six days a week. They work hard, they're committed, they come out here, they give it their all. And you know, sometimes it's even harder because they do put in the same amount of time and they're not necessarily seeing um, those results on the other end. Because actually we were over at the time, so we were, I guess you could consider, shush. <laughs> I guess you could consider that as totally defeated. But if you met my players, they weren't totally defeated. So I invited Tony, I said, do you want to see? Come out, come to practice, and then come coach a game with us. And he did. He did. <laughs> and um, I would like to think that, you know, maybe people get to see that even though sometimes there are programs with losing records, it certainly doesn't mean that these kids are losing in their heart, their mind, their soul, their effort, their time, their commitment, their loyalty to the program. And um, so Tony, Coach Tony came out, he gave the pregame speech. Um, unfortunately, we fought hard, we didn't come out on top that night. Um, but the very next game, we did. And um, that's when the Daily South Town was, where the Menards was located. And all of the girls got in their car, they drove over to the Daily South Pond, they ran into the newsroom going, Coach Brandon, we won, mm -hmm. Coach Brandon, we won. Um, yeah, that was when the newsroom people were a little curious about what was going yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> they had to run through the newsroom. Yeah. We, they did, they, and I didn't stop them either. So, you know, um, that's just kind of the beginning of the story um, with us and Tony. Over the years, and I know I can even point to Randy, um, who has an article right now hanging in his office written by Tony. Um, what a good person to write about the goodness of sports. And I think that's what I remember most about Tony. He's, he doesn't get into the, the, the weeds, he doesn't get into the stirring the pot. He really writes great articles about great kids and great coaches and really, isn't that what we all wanna read these days? And um, so I, I'm not allowed to say Tony's retiring after 50 years. I'm allowed to say that he's gonna take a break for a little while and that he may pop back up maybe in the winter and possibly for softball. But 50 years, this man has been writing about high school kids, including our Titans, including myself as a former Titan, myself as a Titan coach, and uh, Randy as an Eagle coach will kind of forget where he was, <laughs> but um, he's done a lot of good for our kids, and I don't think he always gets the recognition that he deserves for being so good to so many high school kids. So, Tony, Aww. take your tight. <laughs> I know you'll say a few words. I already wrote 600 today. Yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose I can add a little a few hundred, but I don't need to. But, I get that. I mean, it's really pretty amazing to think it's been 50 years ago that I was in journalism class at Bremen and Linda Profetto walked up to me after school and said, hey, there's an editor at the Star newspaper over there in Harvey that's looking for someone to cover baseball this spring. Okay. And I went down there and met Jim Stoddard. And, you know, you, you mentioned that it's the thing about the good stories, good kids and all that. That man. You're a high school kid. You know how you feel if you wrote something nasty. And it just stuck with me in all these years. Um, and I always try to tell the younger reporters that come along, you know, look, you know, anybody could pull five items off the shelf in aisle five and everyone will look. Write me a positive story about a kid that's interesting. Now you're a writer. And that's really, I've tried to live by it. I guess they kept me around for 50 years. So <laughs> I probably, like what you were saying, you know, we're gonna take a break in December after volleyball season, and then, uh, but I got all these softball people saying, you can't quit. <laughs> so we'll probably be back next spring and, and do some softball, but um, I'm really proud to be a 228 grad. I really am, but, and I've met so many good people, uh, coaches, of course, all the way down the line, and me and Johnny D'Ambrosio had quite a fun relationship as far as the we, story. We did it when we were 
caution? I don't know if they have the time for that. Uh, yeah, but no, I mean, but you challenged me. You did, you I, I said, how do you do it? How do you, on your own 11, how can you do this? How can you deal with it? And you just said, come out and find out. And at, the, at that particular moment, I said, okay. And then I woke up the next day, it was not too easy. <laughs> but it was great. The kids were great. They had a big poster and everything. And, and uh, a basketball, a black mm -hmm. basketball. They didn't like it. That's true. They did? So, anyway, that's enough. I was about to say something. <laughs> and, and just so, I, because I'm going to take the floor, my, my mom had to come out personally to see you get this award, along uh, with Neil, because uh, as my mom and my dad called it Sips, Sips is one of their favorite place, and obviously you're one of their favorite people too. So, oh, well, um, and Brandy from the Chamber thank is you. here representing the Chamber of Commerce as thank well. You. So, um, again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to recognize two great people. Um, I did forget you're the Brennan grad, and you know, the, the, <laughs> I mean, I think we may have talked about it many moons ago, but the fact of the matter is, is that I hope this um, also tells a tale that. If we can make those connections, he's a high school kid, and we make a connection, you know, at the Star newspaper, and it turned into his career. And I know Corey, Dr. Williams, is very big on looking to make those connections because they do work. So um, it's off to you, Tony. Thank you.
Health and Dental Insurance Renewal for July 1st, 2023. This item is being recommended for full board approval. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Lucas, second by Ms. Motley. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Lucas? Aye. Mr. Whitcomb, second by Ms. Motley. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Whitcomb? Aye. Ms. Motley? Aye. Ms. Lucan? Aye. Ms. Bush? Aye. Ms. Black? Aye. Ms. Stern? Aye. Mr. Shockley? Aye. Item 5.4 is the District 228 June 2023 Surety Bond Renewal. This item is being recommended for full board approval. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Lucan, second by Ms. Motley. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Whitcomb, second by Ms. Motley. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Whitcomb? Aye. Mrs. Motley? Aye. Mrs. Lucan? Aye. Mrs. Bush? Aye. Ms. Black? Aye. Ms. Stern? Aye. Mrs. Shockley? Aye. Item 5.6, Dr. Bosdale. Board, uh, thank you for uh, uh, having us over here tonight. Just wanted to make sure that you all could be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, I'm here tonight to talk to you about uh, on our screen over there, and I, uh, I actually just realized it wasn't attached, so I attached it for Dr. Blow. Um, but I'm here to talk to you about Unified Insight. Uh, it's a platform that um, actually uh, people started looking for a, a, a product earlier in the school year. Uh, administrators and actually several departments and several buildings were independently looking for something that was going to help them decrease the amount of time that we were pulling data, putting them in spreadsheets, manipulating a spreadsheet to identify these are the students that need additional support. That was a time-consuming process. Uh, we looked at several different products, uh, EduClimber, Panorama, uh, were two of them. And, and this third one, uh, I became aware of this search, was involved in evaluating those other products. And um, we have, we're a power school school district. We use that, uh, we use power school as our main disk where all of the student data lives. Uh, and I brought and said, hey, we should probably look at the, the tool that is similar to these others that is in the environment or the ecosystem of all the other products that we use, um, and that's Unified Insights. Uh, so the, the goal of Unified Insights is to augment our ability to identify, monitor, and then intervene for struggling students. Uh, as um, Mr. Towner talked about earlier, uh, it, it really is, that is uh, uh, the work of many, many people at Hillcrest, but one of the things I, I, I credit them for is they've done a ton of work uh, digging through the data to identify why are students becoming struggling students, when they're struggling, what is working to get them out of being struggling, and then looking at the, like the, the, the benefits or the efficacy of the programs that they're, they're in, or the interventions. Um, so we're gonna walk you through quickly uh, a little bit about this. Does it make sense to turn that? Is it okay if you don't see that? Um, so what is the need? So as the amount of data we collect about our students increases, it's, lo it's larger than ever. Um, the amount of effort it takes to collate, analyze the data is beyond what we can do on a daily basis. So right now what we're doing is we're doing a weekly process where we take all of the student grade data and we put them into one spreadsheet and then we go pull discipline data and then we go pull attendance data and then we go and pull uh, data from SAT or we pull it from Master Manager and we bring it all into one giant spreadsheet. And then uh, the true nerds in our district get to work on Excel formulas and pulling stuff over. And at the end of the day, we're like, okay, these 23 students increased their, their performance and these 42 uh, seem to take a step back. And that takes hours and hours of work. We have the people, but we shouldn't be spending time on something that technology can solve by having basically a giant database to look at this. Um, well, I, I actually asked uh, someone in, our, in my department uh, how many pieces of data did we use to report to the state even 15, 20 years ago? And it was like 50 to 100. Name, uh, age, birth date, uh, and a couple demographic information. And then their final grade. Uh, today, we report 
uh, over 2,000 pieces of data per kid, and that's just what we report to the state. The data we actually monitor and maintain about a student is, quite frankly, almost infinite. Um, whether it's their score on uh, this uh, uh, individual learning objective all the way up to final grade data. Um, so we started looking at some different tools, uh, and one of the things that works for us, or that really came to why this is the tool for us, is that we're all in PowerSchool every day. So but it makes it seamless, there's actually a button you click uh, in PowerSchool now where you can switch between each of the different products of PowerSchool uh, without having to re-log in or go somewhere else. That's gonna help. Um, we need pre-configured data at a glance. We can't, someone should be able to log in in five minutes and see what discipline looks like at Oak Forest High School today. They shouldn't have to go and say, okay, I want this data, this column, this column, this column. Sort it, filter it, take out these kids, no, those are out of district kids. They shouldn't have to do that. We need to uh, be able to save human man hours because again, they should be working with students and, and helping uh, go and, and, and help those students uh, become not at risk. And then we need to be able to track our interventions to make sure they're in the right placement and that the, product, the interventions that we're doing are working to efficacy of the product. So what's the tool? So we utilize power schools and districts already for CIS, registration, Naviance, which is our college platform, and uh, we are piloting Schoology as our, our uh, learning management system in class, and those are all PowerSchool products. That's where all of the, our data is at, um, so it kind of made sense for us, because we're trying to make this that quick tool that people can quickly access to be in the environment we're in every day. Um, and then as a district, we went through and looked at, like I mentioned earlier, EduClimber, Panorama, and the Solutions Unified Insights. So I'm gonna walk through, there's kind of three portions of it. These are actually separate products that uh, there, there's about 20 of them. These are the three we identified that we think are really gonna, uh, they're gonna be net positives for us and make us more, uh, more effective uh, and efficient. The first is just student essentials. That is like the main uh, dashboard part of it. They actually come with 60 research-based dashboards that allow you to look at uh, data not only from that calendar year, but over calendar years because all of our stuff from the past uh, it is in PowerSchool. It can actually go back to our first year with PowerSchool, which I don't even know how many years that is. It's, it's 12 maybe, somewhere in there. So all of that data about how has class whatever, how has that gone, or how has trends gone over time. Uh, it looks at enrollment, special programs, attendance, behavior, academics, and learning. Uh, so it, it, it just has these kind of built-in ones, and then on the fly, you can say, hey, I wanna see these three columns, and it builds the, the most useful report kind of automatically it uses uh, AI and machine learning to say, hey, you probably mean this, and it builds it for you. Um, it also is gonna, on a day by day, week by week, month by month basis, it's gonna give us um, uh, basically like a school report card. We get a school report card that we obviously get through the state every year. This is on the fly school report cards that we could say, hey, what is attendance behavior? What is algebra one looking like? We have algebra one, but what is that class looking like? Uh, and it's, again, it's pulling the real-time data uh, because it has it all already in there. Um, the last part of student essentials I wanna talk about is actually my favorite. It's called student profiles. I'm calling it student baseball cards. Uh, but essentially, everything about that one kid is on that one page. Their GPA over the four years of their high school career, their attendance over a four-year period, you could, uh, and this is what, what they uh, demonstrated is, you could say, hey, has this student's Friday attendance changed over time? Well, just because on Fridays, this kid is, you know, it's, they're getting a little lazier on the week, they wanna take an extra day off for the weekend. Uh, it looks at SEL, and again, it's pulling it from Naviance, from Schoology, from PowerSchool, um, all these different platforms. So it's gonna help us kinda keep everything about that student, what interventions they're in, what we've tried, uh, and how they're doing. So that's the first part of it. The second part is another one I'm excited about. It's called at-risk analysis. So uh, everyone's heard of chat GPT and all the, the things around this. This is not AI. I'm gonna say that up front. This is machine learning. It is less scary and less, uh, uh, what, what's the, the 20 whatever where they, the robots take over? Uh, it, it's more, uh, they actually take all of the data and they use a computer to say, hey, we have found that for your, based on your data for District 228, that attendance and English SAT score sophomore year are the biggest 
a correlated factor to graduation rate. It can help us identify what are the things that are really, where should we be pushing our resources? What are the things that we're gonna get the best gain from those resources? So it uses machine learning to give us upfront probability of graduation at a specific time, which obviously we're trying to get that up as high as possible. So if, if we see a lower number, we have to do some work with that student. Um, we can actually look at individual factors. Hey, attendance on Fridays for this kid is causing problems. And then also we can set up our own threshold. Hey, for, uh, we wanna see it at risk for us is students who are not passing this class and this class at the, at the halfway mark of first semester. We can fill all that in and it uses, again, it, it's building this all over time based on our data, not uh, you know research that says, oh, freshman English, that may be true, but maybe for D228, it's sophomore math classes, whatever it may be. Um, and then the third part of it is called MTSS, the multi-tiered system of support. Um, so essentially, we can build interventions in the product. We already have them running in our school. Um, take FLC, SLC, math intervention, uh, all the interventions that we've added. We can add them in here, put students in the intervention and track their progress. And what we'll see over time is that, wow, the FLC is worth its weight in gold. The FLC is bringing our student pass rates up through this intervention tracking. So it's gonna allow us to identify student needs, uh, create and track student plans, execute and monitor interventions, and then basically look and see if the uh, uh, interventions are being effective. Um, so really that's a tool that's gonna benefit our students, but it's also gonna benefit us to make sure how do we evaluate systems as they go through. So these are the three tools that again, as a district, a group of administrators, we were looking for something, it started organically. Out of that process, this is where we came and this is why um, we're bringing this kind of recommendation uh, to purchase this tool probably for the district. So, uh, we went from a data stream to a data fire hose, uh, and technology is uniquely positioned to help us understand it all. Um, so based on that, uh, or I, I'd like to recommend uh, that we purchase this. The, the price is in flux, I'm negotiating it down day by day. Uh, we've gone down to some, but it is, uh, it is gonna be under $40,000. Uh, but that's where we're at today. I, I have confidence that we're, there's, there's meat on the bone there still to get to, um, but we haven't finished that process yet. Is it a manual process? Uh, it is, yeah. yeah. Most, Almost every software vendor is just going to that because that's where they make more money. And this is something that annually or whatever we get now are in a new already? Engine, uh, uh, I, decision Ed, is that what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, that's what it is. So Decision Ed is actually probably a more fully flushed out tool for looking at district stuff, right? So when, when Corey's pulling things like, um, how is our EL program do, doing? Uh, first of all, it takes a, uh, it takes a lot of know-how about data to be able to, to find that information, which is why uh, she's great at what she does. Um, it, there's a place for that and this actually in the same place. We need something that's easy to use, has a low cost to entry for people to start using. That's what this tool does. And then we need a, uh, a high-powered database solution, which is what Decision Ed is. Who's gonna use this? Uh, this is probably gonna be used by um, nearly everyone who's overseeing any of the student data that we measure. So discipline data, um, uh, attendance data, which I think is something we're gonna probably be focusing a lot on, uh, grade data, um, a lot of people, pretty much all administrators, teachers have, will have access to this. Um, because it's in PowerSchool, it's gonna be, click, here's my teacher dashboard or whatever we decide to do. Dr. Bob, before we ask one more question, can I get a motion to approve the open board of the council? So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Gleason, second by Ms. <laughs> if I can just interject, the, the piece here that Decision Ed doesn't do is the intervention side. Right. So, what, you know, if we have 10 kids doing check and connect, we can monitor them more closely and see what's caught up with them and what's not. Yeah. Will teachers have to enter in any more data or will they be, will there be pulling? Okay, and then my second question is, with time, this, this database is gonna grow. It's gonna be, so are, are we gonna have to end up buying like, I don't no. know. There's no storage? usage size or, um, there's no need to, uh, our, our use of it is independent of the size of the data in there. How long will you store it? Uh, it's stored by PowerSchool. Actually, all of PowerSchool products are cloud-based, so that's someone else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it, uh, there will be no, um, other than the, the thing that I fight every year, and I'm in a, a, a fairly heated discussion with PowerSchool now, is uh, the yearly uptick in cost for just all of the software. 
that we use, uh, especially with the fact that we're never looking for, you know, oh, we need more money. And it's like, we're a school district, we're not a business. Um, so it's, it's that's the ongoing struggle that we're fighting on. And, well, and on that note, are there guidelines as to what they think is gonna be useful? Um, internally or for them? Uh, like, uh, what, what do they have access to the data? Is that what your question is? Well, yeah. So, so they, with power tool, we have an agreement that they actually um, cannot see our actual data without our permission. So like if I do a support call with PowerTool, they actually have to log into my computer to view it because of data privacy, we want to protect all that data. Yeah. Um, internally, we have full access to all of that, however we want to use it, um, but there is not a risk here. Um, PowerTool is actually one of the highest rated security uh, stances of, of many of the vendors. They're, they're one I'm less worried about than most. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's they, they have a lot of it, um, but because of it, they are, again, they're positioned in a, a very secure spot because they have so many customers, it would be bad. <laughs> it would yeah. be bad. Um, and then when, when do you feel like you'll have a solid number? Um, I, I probably in the next, really, depending on your vote, what actually the benefit is, I can say, hey, we already have these other power tool products. Because we're bringing this one, I want to discount on all of them. So that's probably where our benefit is going to come. I, I'm guessing somewhere in that five to 10 grand total savings across all of those. Um, so 40 down, you know, that amount. Um, but it, I, I can, we can, I don't know how you want to handle it, um, but but it will be no higher than 40. Um, and But I'm anticipating going to 35, 40 thousand. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Thank you. is right. 
Second. Moved by Ms. Whitcomb, second by Ms. Gleason. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Whitcomb? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mrs. Black? Aye. Mrs. Martin? Aye. Mrs. Stern? Aye. This subscription service has two components, the policy reference manual, encyclopedia of sample policies and procedures, weekly reference book notice, and a periodic update issues. Uh, PRESS is an essential tool for keeping board policy and administrative procedure manuals up to date. Both the policy reference manual and the periodic update issues are well published. I am recommending this item for full board approval. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Gleason, seconded by Ms. Motley. Any discussion? Roll call, please. talk about um, my ability to set up and protest my government and its first right, uh, First Amendment right. Um, the police was called on me, of course, by, well, I have to put it, but I'm going to put them there again, Dr. Portis or Dr. Dan Dodd. They communicated to the board y'all a little story here. Edmund Gleason cannot be the president of District 228 School Board. Yeah, that's what it said when I read over your paper back some years ago. She forced Dr. Mitchell out, long story short, because he was a gay man. 
That's incorrect, Mark. Yeah. I will not stand by yeah, and well, say you that. You can say whatever piece you have. That is incorrect. You forced them out. And he did they not even force them out. He was fired by the board. No, he wasn't. After a after hearing. After you took the presidency. After a hearing. After you took the presidency. After. In other words, you guys signed and swore an oath to the majority of the board in front of a judge. No, he threatened and my life. Huh? Who threatened whose life? Dr. Mitchell. I had no idea. I no, didn't care just telling you. There. Something you might not have known. No, no, I didn't. Just like you said, I threatened your life. Absolutely. And I did? Then why don't you give me a hearing so I can prove it? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the purpose of us to come out and address our government is the fundamental right that is given to us in the Constitution. If you weaponize a police department against me to come out here to do what I have every right to do by two people who don't even live in the district, I'm here to protect everybody's interests here. If this guy who Miss Molly and Miss Lott have gets his way. What guy are you talking about, Mr. Johnson? Thank Mr. You, Mr. Mr. Okay, Mr. Alsbury. President Alsbury. He's not a mayor, he's the president. But if he gets his way, he's gonna call property values in Havercrest to drop between 70 and 80%. Do you have data to back that up? No. Okay. But that is, that, yes, that, that's, but we do know that it's going to uh, cause an effect. It will cause an effect. That's why so many people like Green, Green Space and everybody is fighting you people about not letting you do that to come out there and zone them out of their home. What people the people of Havercrest. I don't work for Havercrest. Okay, I you don't. You are part of this board that was backed by Mr. Alsby. They haven't contacted us. Okay, I've seen your, your printout of who he's backing to get on there. He tried it over at the other grammar school. Well, don't don't distract me. You, we can argue about it all you want. I'm not arguing with you. Okay, then question. don't. You smart people are supposed to speak. I'm reclaiming my time. I'm reclaiming my time because I should not have to go back and forth with this woman about something in there she knows to be true. If he gets his way and he has already started by putting the people that lost their positions as trustee back on a committee for the rezoning and one other thing that, that he did, but the rezoning allows them to go head forward and he has the board of trustees over there that is going to rezone that property. And how it affects us is because we will not be able to collect the full amount of the property value. Once that goes down there, everybody's got to make up the cost. You people who all was backed by this president are uh, really a, a not in the best interest of the school district to do it. Do I have more time? Yeah, Thank you, Mr. Good. Johnson. All right. All right, moving on to our announcements. Our next meeting is uh, scheduled for the Committee of the Whole, Tuesday, July 11th at 7 p.m. at Bremen High School. And our next regular board meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, July 18th at 7 p.m. at Bremen High School. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I move. <laughs>